Okay, hey, we're going to talk about the people that come in our lives every day. Not just the, the people here, but the people that come in our lives every day. How I truly believe God has allowed it for a reason. Every person that we meet, every person, no matter who, no matter who. In the last few years, I've took a position at the Toledo Gospel Rescue Mission where I meet probably 200 people a day. And I've realized how important each person comes in my life, the Lord has sent them or allowed them to be there. And a lot of time it's a blessing. Or am I the blessing? Am I supposed to do something that God wants me to do to enrich someone's lives? Am I to say something or do something? And I've been working on this for a couple of years now. Yeah, his, his glasses. Do you notice his glasses? His little thingy on his glasses. <laughs> Yeah, I lost that's my so he glasses can't lose again. Another pair of glasses. <laughs> All right. Yeah, okay. People come into our lives for a reason, a season, or a li- lifetime. Uh, really think about that. How many times have someone come into your life just for one day or just for an hour that had an impact on your life? You might not recognize it right then, but maybe a couple of weeks later, you realize, wow, I'm glad that person come. He said something that helped me go through something. Could that be God sending these people? Yeah. The Lord allowed it to happen for a reason. And a lot of times we don't don't see the miracles that's all around us in our lives. You know, just the air we breathe is a miracle. We, we don't see these things that God is doing in our lives. None of them. Your turn. My turn. <laughs> well, even if you go, even when you go to the bathroom in the ladies' room, you know, you're just going in there doing your business and everything. This, this happened to me at work. I'm just in there doing my business. That this lady brings this other lady in and says, "I got a word for you." And I had been praying over my son because he's not saved and he's not walking with the Lord. And so I'd just been praying for him. He had been on my heart for like two weeks. And her word for that lady was exactly what I needed. And so I got out. And I, like, I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. You know, I know you're doing this. I thought you, you thought you were alone and everything. But that word was for me too. And she said, oh, thanks. I know I'm on the right track then. You know, I mean, sometimes when you don't even think you're going to do something for somebody. You end up affecting them. So it's just like a cool thing. Very cool thing how God works. You know, and it's always, it's always not just for that person. You know, if there's just two of us there, yeah, it's just for us too. But a lot of times things around us, we don't notice. Right. We might not even know the people, but they overhear something that God has sent for them. So they've, God has used whatever we were talking about for that person. It happens all the time. I see it all the time, especially in my life. Just like this sermon here. I didn't know what we were going to do. And most of you that know me know that I usually wait right till the last second. But you know, but I, I know God puts stuff in my heart and then I'll, I'll write it down. And then next thing I know, God will send different people. Some people that I don't even know and say something about what, and what I'm supposed to do. What word do I have for, for the people, for the congregation? And God, just one, it's not just one time. It's three or four times somebody will say something. It's like, wow, that's what, I'm, that's what I think I need to preach about. Mm-hmm. I need to talk about. It happens every time. Every time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like these. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's Lots look at um, Matthew five forty four through 48. If y'all want to read along with me or, yeah. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. For he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. 
For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? If you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. You, you, yeah, yeah, really, amen. You know, all of us that go to church together, we, we see things and we talk and we share things and, you know, people come and ask for prayer or you, t- you ask for prayer. But what about the people that God has sent in your life that day from work, just from anything? What about that person? What, what I've been doing here the last few years, I've been asking the Holy Spirit to awaken the spirit that's inside me. Because I know that person came for a reason. A reason, a season, a lifetime, whatever. But I'm getting focused on, I want to do what God wants me to. And it's become a desire in my heart. It used to be, I just do these things. We just do these things because we know it's right. We're supposed to do these things. But when it becomes a desire in your heart, things starts happening to you. Sickness goes away. You know, instead of focusing on myself, I focus on what God wants me to do. I've noticed that my health is better because I'm not thinking about all this. I mean, we all get sick, but I'm not thinking about this. I put God's loves these people. I need to love these people. It tells us. It tells us in his word. We're supposed to love everyone, even our enemy. I don't mean we got to like our enemies, but we're supposed to love them. We're supposed to love them. My turn? I, I just yeah, thought of something yeah, when you were... We just done this last night. Yeah, when you were saying that, I just thought about... Last weekend, I was in Hocking Hills, and I went ziplining. It was, it was, really, it was really cool. I loved it. I absolutely loved it. But when, I, when we signed up to do it, I started thinking all these bad thoughts, like, oh, my gosh, what if, what if I get up there and I, get, I freeze and I can't do it? What, you know, what if I get hurt? You know, I don't want to get hurt. I mean, that would not be a great thing. And I just started thinking and thinking and thinking. My negative thinking was taking me right to the trash. And um, I didn't even think about it at first. And then I just started getting more nervous and more nervous and more nervous. That's what they call stinking thinking right there. Stinking. stinking thinking, and it was stinking. I'm telling you, it was stinking. And I'm like, but I, I you know, I signed up for this thing. And I, I am cheap. If I put my money on something, Amen. I'm going to do it. I mean, that's just the bottom line. Uh, if I buy it, I'm going to use it. If I, if I pay for it, I'm going to do it. I mean, that's just it. So we're driving over there, and, and Delane is trying to be encouraging. She was my roommate. She's trying to be encouraging. And then all of a sudden, it just hit me. Wait a minute. I love roller coasters. I absolutely love roller coasters. I love Cedar Point. I absolutely love it. It's going to be like Cedar Point. I mean, just like that. All the fear went away and I was excited. Just like that. I'm telling you, that's what our brain does. When you get, when you get stuck in that negative, stuck in that negative, stuck in that negative, it just builds and builds and builds and you'll just get, you'll be in the trash before you know it. But the minute you switch that brain and you start thinking of something positive and you start thinking of something that you really like, man, it just goes just like that. I mean, it was, it was immediate. All of a sudden, I was excited. All of a sudden, I couldn't wait to do it. It was really cool the way God worked that out. Yeah. And you met, met some people. Did you get to share? Did I get to share with people? Christ or something? Or did somebody say something? Nobody, nobody, nobody said anything to me. I just switched my stinking thinking. <laughs> Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You know, <laughs> but, but even, even in a situation like that, sometimes we need to ask the spirit inside, okay, Lord, I'm here to zip line my, whatever you did. And uh, while I, my while I work, right across the trees, I was while like, I work, she's on vacation. <laughs> and so, <laughs> and that's okay. But, um, God sends people in our lives and, and people all around us. And, and we're, we're not being aware that. There's a reason for all this. And I'm, I'm, I've been asking God, show me more, show me more, show me more. And he's been showing me more. And then I'm, you know what? If we really think about our lives and what we're going through and we've, we're praying, God's already answered it. It's all around us. And, it may, and usually it's never for just one person. 
Whatever situation it is, it, it could be for everybody in, around you. You know, it's like I deal with quite a few people every day. I, we do a lot of praying, more than the church, really, where I'm at right now. And, you know, I asked God to put me into full ministry. He did. Yeah. And, uh, you yeah, know, be I... Be careful what you pray for sometimes. I, I know. It can get know, overwhelming. I know. But I, you know what? I, it it become a desire now. And there's freedom in that desire when you want to serve God's people, love God's people. There's a, there's a freedom inside me. Amen. You know, I don't get sick as much as I used to because I don't focus on none of this. I look at the people that come in my life and, and say, okay, Lord, is this person for me or is it me for them? Am I to say something? And I ask the Holy Spirit, am I, am I to say something? Sometimes it just comes on me and I say it. Sometimes I can say it, and I shouldn't have said it, but I am a preacher from Detroit, so I can't help that. But the other, other day, I, here, here, I don't know, a couple months ago, it's really funny. Um, okay, let me go this way. All right, God's changing some stuff right now. Um, you know, I'm working really hard, and it's hot, you know, and everything going in there, and I get, oh, man, I'm so tired. And then God sends somebody in my life. You know, to cheer me up. Hey, Harvey, can you come up here a minute? God sent Harvey in my life. Can I borrow that? Oh, no. I don't know what. You're not doing the dog thing, are you? The what? How many people have heard the story about the dog and the gas? No. Oh, well, then maybe you should. No, I ain't doing that. I promised her I wouldn't do a joke. Now, Harvey was put in my life, and he, we trade jokes every day. And we, <laughs> he comes in almost every day, and he, and he gives me a joke. And it just the rest of the day, I don't worry about. Because, and, and you know what? And usually, it, it's touched someone around us, cheered them up, whatever they're going to. So I don't see a lot. I see some smiling faces here, so I figure we'll use Harvey to tell us a joke. Look at his wife. She's going to kill me. <laughs> She's going to kill me. I'm thrilled to be here, and my lovely wife. 38 years. I love her with all my heart, all my liver, all my kidneys, all my pancreas. I, I love her. But just quickly, I want to tell you, in the, in the verse here, the first verse, the 44th, it says, pray for your enemies, that those that persecute you. And it reminds me of a story of a missionary. He's in Africa. And he's going through and he sees all the wonderful things that God made. And he's, he's impressed by it. He's in awe. He's actually not even paying attention. And all of a sudden, he spots a lion that spotted him, and he begins to tremble. So he goes in the other direction, and the lion begins to go in his direction. So he starts walking faster. The lion begins walking faster. Then he takes off running as fast as he could, jumping over streams and jumping over uh, logs, anything he can to get away from the lion. The lion is right on his tail. Finally, he gets cornered at the edge of a cliff, and he begins to pray. This is his enemy. Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute. So he prays. He prays for the lion. He says, dear God, uh, uh, do something right now. God, turn that lion into a Christian right now. <laughs> Instantly, the lion dropped down on his paws, picked up his two front paws and said, dear God, thank you for this food on the bottom of your <laughs> Now we got some smiles. <laughs> See, the, the God's will send people in our lives to cheer us up, to give us a... You like that one, didn't you? I like that one. All right. I like that. See, I told her I wouldn't do no jokes today. So, hey, I, I got Harvey. <laughs> so, he's anyway. slick, man. He's slick. I'll tell you. <laughs> so, anyway, God will send people in our lives. And what we need to do is start uh, asking the Holy Spirit to awaken our spirit. Because, you know what? These times are changing. We're, we're, we're studying right now in Revelation that the Bible studies at the outreach. And this happening right now in front of us, and it's accelerating. And so we need to ask God, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to awaken the Spirit in us, to be more aware of the people that comes in our lives. Lord, am I to do something? Or am I to take some information? What am I to do? That's what we need to do. We need to be more aware of this because God is changing people's lives. Amen. Even our enemies. Even our enemies. And you never know, you never know when someone's going through something. You never know. 
You know, I mean, I, I, I had somebody come through the, uh, where's Larry at? Larry. He come through there, he's all down. And I said, I don't know why I said it. I said, can I pray for you? He said, well, yeah. It's changed, your, it's changed your, both our lives, hasn't it? He was going through some difficult times. We don't know what people are going through. So what I, I, my, my message to you guys is to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to awaken your spirit. And, start, and, you know, get out of the boat. Yeah. <laughs> Carolyn, get out of the boat and start doing stuff. Start asking people, hey, can I pray for you? Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. Or if you're going through something, hey, can you pray for me? And see what happens. See what God starts to do in your life. Yes, like Romans 8, 28. Um, it, it, it's funny because um, I have this dear friend, Jane, but when I first met her, she was the, one of those kind of people. Did you ever have those kind of people where you see them coming and you think, oh, no, oh, no, I can't take her today, and you just go the other way? Well, that, that's kind of was, that's kind of was me and Jane. This was, this was way before I got to be a pastor, so forgive me. But anyways, you know, she, she'd be coming one way and I'd slip out the other way because I just, oh, my goodness, she just drove me crazy, absolutely crazy. And so... I don't know what happened. I don't know how it happened. I didn't even pray for her, really. Honest to God, I did not even pray for her. But God gave me a softening in my heart for her that was absolutely unbelievable. It was, it's like supernatural, really. Now she's got dementia, and I don't get angry at her. I don't get upset with her. I mean, this is not me. Uh, trust me, this is not me. This is God's grace pouring into me for Jane. And it's just kind of cool the way he's, he's just worked it all out. Now, you know, I'm her number one now. John's her number two. I just love it. I just love it. He's like pooped her, but no, no. It just cracks me up when he, she says, and you're my number two. And I just crack up every time she says it. But I mean, really, we are all she's got pretty much. She doesn't have any family. She doesn't have any, she's got one um, man that is kind of taking care of her for the majority of the time. But I mean, for just, just to be, I'm, we're like her, we're like it. And God worked it out. God, God took that, that time that I just couldn't, I just couldn't even be in the presence of her and switched it around. And now, you know, she loves being with me. I love being with her. It's just really cool how he worked it all out. Just like Romans 8, 28. Mm -hmm. And we know <laughs> that God causes all things to work together for his good and for those who love God, who are called according to his purposes. Yep. I put that his thing in there. I shouldn't have done that. Oh, you wrote that? Oh. I did so, not write that. Oh, okay. God wrote that. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Have you guys ever like prayed for something? Say you're going through something and, and you just, uh, I don't know, something you're going through. And you just ask God, please help me, Lord. Send somebody. You know, send somebody to help me through this situation. And I'm sure most of us in here have done that. You know, and it's like I read a little article the other day about a pastor's wife. And it's kind of funny, but it, it's really happened. And um, she was, had to go to the uh, drugstore to get some medicine for her daughter. And so she goes in and she comes back out and she locked her keys. She could see her keys laying on the front seat and she couldn't get in her car. And her, her daughter was really sick. And this is, this is a true writing here that I read. And I wanted to share it with you. So somebody gave her a coat hanger and it's like, you know, she didn't know what to do with the coat hanger. And so she just stood there and she said, I prayed. I said, Lord, can you send somebody to help me get in my car so I can get this med medicine to my daughter? And all at once, a motorcycle guy drove up on a motorcycle. All, he was greasy and had them do rags and all that stuff and just a big beard. And he got off her. He said, can I help you? And she says, she explained to him that, well, I've got to get this medicine to my daughter, and, and I, I got a coat hanger. They give me a coat hanger, but I don't know how to use it. He said, well, here, I'll help. And he took the coat hanger, bang, opened the door. And uh, he, she, so she gave him a hug, and, and it's, it's funny, but think about this. She gave him a hug, and she says, uh, Lord, thank you for sending this good man to me. And he says, oh, miss, I'm not a good man. He says, I just got out of prison about an hour ago for car theft. <laughs> 
So, so she, now this is a true story though. So she turned around and hugged the guy again and said, Lord, thank you for sending me a professional. So this is a true story that I read of a pastor. That, and I thought, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, you had to get that joke in, huh? I had to, I had to get it in there. Get it in there. <laughs> All right. But you know what? These people are for reasons that God sends people for stuff. Sometimes God sends people in our life even sometimes somebody will come into my life and, and I'm not sure why, I'll ask God to show me. And sometimes it's something to prepare me for where I'm about to go. And, and all of us, that happens to all of us. We just don't see it. You know, and we need to ask the Holy Spirit to awaken our spirit to see these things. Because God is involved in our lives. If we know him, he's involved in our life. Yeah. All the time. Not just every once in a while. Not in this room. Everywhere we go. Every, even the people that are standing behind us in line. Yes. Yep. It doesn't matter. God has got his purpose. Everyone that comes in our lives, good or bad, for whatever, God has allowed it. And what do we need to do? We need to get that spirit, our spirit awakened and see what we're supposed to do. Are we supposed to pray for this person? You know? And I've been going through this for the last couple years and and it was funny because, uh, and it's always, you know what? When we're in a group of people, it's always for more than one person. Always. And I've seen it over and over again. It's always for more than one person. You know, and there's a, there's a time that I'm coming down the street or something. I think I shared it last time I was in here. I need to pray for somebody. The Holy Spirit. I knew, I knew that's what I heard. I need to pray for somebody. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I've shared this before. I pull up to the stoplight, and I'm standing there, and, and it hit me again. Pray. Pray for that person. Ooh. And I kind of looked, and the car pulled up, and the guy, I said, all right, I'll pray for him. And so I said, Lord, I don't know what he's going to, but pray, Lord, protect this person or lead this person and take care of him and do. The man turned his head, and he was bawling like a baby. So he was going through something. And that's being sensitive to the Holy Spirit that's in, in our lives. Right. Everyone that comes around us is for a reason. Yes. It's not, it, it was, it's no coincidence. Amen. Nothing. Nothing in this world is a coincidence. Because God has got it all in his hand. Amen. Even the stars are put exactly where he wanted them. Yes. We're put exactly where he wants us. And if you want to feel the freedom that I'm feeling, not all the time, this freedom's not there all the time, but a lot of time is when I'm asking God, okay, God, it's not about me. And we just sing about this. We just sing about this. It's not about me. It's about your kingdom. What do I need to do with this person? Do I need to pray or do I need to listen? And I'm telling you, that's my word for you guys today. Start trying this and see your life change. Your life will change. It'll be a freedom that you've never, that, that it, it'll bring such a hunger on you, the freedom that you feel. Where, and then the desire, that's what I like. It will become a desire. And there was a scripture I wanted on that, and I, it just wouldn't come back to me, so I couldn't do it. Yeah, I, I prayed once, um, a long time ago, uh, and I kept saying to the Lord, you know, you're, you're good, Lord, I, and, and I know you hear me, but I need somebody to talk to. I mean, I need somebody right now to talk to, and no kidding, the phone rang, and it was my mom. So, I mean, really, I mean, just those little simple things, it, he just answers those prayers. He truly does. It was there all the time. Yeah, yeah. All I had to do was ask. A lot of these things are, are already there. It's all around us, and we just don't see it. Right. We don't see these things that, that, that are going on around us. It's been there all the time. The protection, the guidance, the wisdom, it's all around us. If we can waken that spirit to, to, to understand what the Holy Spirit is doing with us, how it's leading us, giving us things to say, and sometimes it just give us the back up and be quiet. And listen, because usually that's from someone that God wants to either give us a word to direct us where, where, where he's about to take us or what we're fixing to go through. 
the protection and everything is right there. Yeah, and so many times we freeze because we don't really know. We don't really know what to say. And, you know, I'm like, okay, God, give me a word. Give me a go. Or, you know, and, and you're just like freaked out because you don't have a word. And you just have to trust because I love the contemporary English version. Um, Luke 12, 12, it says, at that time, the Holy Spirit will tell you what to say. You don't have to worry. You don't have to be freaking out because you don't know what to say. And then Matthew 10, 20 says, for it will not be you speaking, but the Holy Spirit, or the, excuse me, but the Spirit of the Father speaking through you. So, I mean, really, all we have to do is relax and trust that the Lord will give us what we need to, what we need to say when we need to say it and just thank him for it. Because a lot of times he'll say something through you that sounds really, really good. And you think, oh, I know that was you. Because I never, I never could say anything that good. I mean, that was you. That, you make me look good sometimes. I'm telling you, you make me look really good sometimes. So. Yeah. Um, also, when you, when you start getting into that, I don't know, I call it a different plateau in our life of walk with Christ. Um, one thing that I do know that's important, because I've went through it myself, when God gives me a word for someone, I ask God, is this from you or is this me? Do I have a motive? Because we can fall into that. We can fall into that motive, you know, to make us look good, you know. We can fall in, and that's a trap. But there's always a way out. God has it all around you there to get out of that. But when you start seeking for God to reveal, if there's a motive, Lord, Lord, reveal it to me. Because I don't want to do this. I mean, sometimes our heart, you know, we're going we're gonna to prophesy or say something to someone or God said this. But check it. Check it out. Make sure it's from the Holy Spirit. I do. And, I, you know, I find, you'd be surprised how many times I find, no, nah, I didn't need to say that. God didn't give me that. I just said it. You know? And then I repent and ask God to help me not do it again. And I usually do it again. But then I ask him again, forgive me. And he does. But when we start to get that desire to, to, to love God's people, all of us, no matter who we are, no matter where we come from, and get out of that judgment thing, you know, because Satan got us on that one. He tricks us on that one. We get, oh, man, that guy here, you know, he's living here on the street, sleeping underneath the... You know what? God loves that person just as much as he loves me. Amen. You know? Amen. You know? And God puts us where he wants to. He, he, we're already, he's already planned these steps. You know, for my life, I, I look back at my life, you know, I'm homeless. Nine, 10, 11 years old. And all, most of my life, you know, my young adult life, God, why would you let this happen? But what does it say? You take oh, the bad, it turns into the good, right? Together for the Look day. at me now. He prepared oh, okay. me for what I was about to do. And he prepared me well, because I have a heart for the people that are struggling. Even if it's their fault. And I get mad at a lot of people. Well, you know what? If you'd have paid your electric bill, you still have lights on instead of get your fingernails done. You know? <laughs> well, you know, not, not now, you guys. Now, wait a minute here. Fingernails are important. <laughs> Uh oh, went the Finger wrong nails one. Are important. Wrong example. Bigger nails are important. Okay. That's what they make crayon for. No, I'm just. Look so, at <laughs> Willie Lip. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> oh, man, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Look at these girls. <laughs> oh, man, I shouldn't have took that one. <laughs> I fell right. All right. Just repent. Your turn. Just repent. <laughs> it's okay. It's all right. I don't know where we're at. I don't know where we're at. <laughs> you always do that to me, too. I had to see he turned it around on me. I did not speak <laughs> about nails at all. I did not. It was I you. got any witnesses here. <laughs> it was you. I don't know. There's more women in here than men. I better leave it alone. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> all right, guys. Should. I'll take the fall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Some things are priority. But. All right. But you know what? There's people in our lives for this. Right. And, and even if we're going through some hard times and we don't understand why, God's still in control of this. Absolutely. You know, and what's that, that one uh, song I like? Praise Him in the storm. If you're going through it, praise Him. Lord, I don't like this, but I praise you, Lord, because I know you're going to turn it in for the good, for the kingdom. Right, right. And I want to be part of that. 
I want to be part of that. Yeah, if you can put on Philippians uh, 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That's all you have to do. That's all you got to do. With simple. thanksgiving, though. Mm. A lot of times, a lot of times, we don't do the thanksgiving thing well. I mean, we'll, tell, we'll have our list of things we want God to do for us, but the thanksgiving thing only comes after he does it. No, it says, with thanksgiving, let your, let your uh, requests be no, known to God. So you've got to have a grateful heart to start with, or um, he might make you wait a little longer. Yeah. You never know. God's, God's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. But I, really, when we were going through our struggles and stuff, I mean, talking about nails, I always got my hair done. I mean, always. And I got white hair. So, I mean, really? I, he always, <laughs> I've seen it. He always <laughs> gave me the money for my hair. And I love coffee. I'm like a coffee nut. You know, I bring my thermos every week. And um, I always had enough money for coffee. Amen. Always. So, I mean, he just, he just is so great. He supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Always. But here, here's a little thing that you need to think about. When we start following what God wants us to do, we start loving the people around us, and we step out of that ours or what we want. Yes. And we start serving the kingdom. This stuff comes automatically. It'll come automatically. And it'll get to the point where we won't, we're not even asking God for things anymore. Because he knows, he already knows us. And you know what? Stuff will start coming. Wow, you know, I always wanted that. And somebody just walked up and gave it to me. Mm-hmm. And then I thank him. I thank you, thank you, Lord, for doing that. And when we get into that, when we get in that desire to serve God's people, to love everyone, this stuff comes. Health comes. Mm-hmm. There's some people, well, I don't. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. I don't know, some of you might not remember. Uh, um, Pastor Brian wasn't here. I remember he come to visit me when I had my first stroke. And, and the nurse told him, says, I don't know where he's at. He just promised he wouldn't go off of this floor. And I, the way I, the way, I mean, I have my little thing and I'm walking around. I wasn't there for me. I was there to pray for the people on that floor. And I took it seriously. And then he, I, remember, I remember the pastor said, he's a nut. We can't find him, but he did promise not to go off of this floor. I wasn't there for me. You know what? I, I, I said, no, no, I, I'm not going to accept this. You know, even though I you know, had to have help walking sometimes, I was not accepting this. Because my God is a loving God, and he cares about me more than this. And so then I praised him in the storm. I said, okay, Lord, what am I here for? Well... All I can see, I got like 60 patients here I can pray for, and I pray for every one of them. And when I got ready to come out of that hospital, they, were, they met us as we got in the elevator, the one guy, remember? He said, I'm so glad you prayed for me. This has changed. I'm going back to church. Okay, all that may have been for that one person. And that's all that matters. And that's the way all of us need to be. This whole congregation, this is the word for you. Go to your workplaces. Go to your neighbor. Do you know your neighbor? Yeah. Heidi Hill neighbor. He didn't, he, he's not living there because he just lived there. God already arranged this. Say a prayer for him. Even if you don't like him. Say a prayer for him. Sorry. That's okay. Keep where, going. Where You're at? doing good. That right there? You guys see, we don't plan this. We just do it. I trust God will send the right people. Are we done now? That's supposed to be. Oh, the oh, that's a dumb one. Okay, yeah. let me see. We done this one, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. All these things that we learn from people that come into our life that that say things to us, and we just kind of step back, like, "Wow, oh, I never, you know, never seen that." Okay, Lord, help me through this. Help. Thank you for sending that person to tell me this. Whatever, whatever you're going through. If you're going through something really tough with family or friends. And you, you don't understand what to say or do. And someone come in and says, you know, you should maybe pray for somebody. 
You know, at, at our Bible study, which has been going on for <laughs> nine years, my, my number one message to them every week, I try to rem remember it. If you think of one of us, pray for us. Amen. Don't take that thought. Yeah. Take it. If you think of any of us at this table right here, because God has allowed us to be here, he has put us here, pray for that person. You don't have to call them or you don't have to send them a text, hey, I'm praying for you because God told me to. You can if the Holy Spirit told you to do that. But if you don't, just pray. Just pray. God puts a lot of people on my life and I'm starting to learn how to use the text and stuff a little bit better. You know, I was texting people and they go, who is this? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I thought you were. <laughs> but I got a brother in here and I text every day to remind him. And then he, every once in a while he'll say, thank God that you sent this. I was going through something. I didn't know what he was going through. Yeah. But it changes, it's changing his life. He's sitting in here today because God orchestrated it for him to be here. Yeah. Now, his job is to get out of that boat I always do this to Carolyn. Get out of that boat and see what God wants me to do. He wants to use you. He's, you're here. Right. Hallelujah. He wants to use all of us. And I'm telling you, there is such a freedom. Such a freedom. And when you get rid of, when, you, when, it, when it will pass, the desires to ask in God, Lord, can I get a new car? Can I do that? That stuff is going to pass. Because number one thing is God's kingdom. Because I want to see each and every one of you guys there. Right. I want to see each and every one of the people that I have met. I want to see them there. Yes. When that desire comes into us, what a freedom. It's priceless. Amen. And I praise him. Thank you, Lord, for this feeling. Because there's time in my life I really didn't care what happened to you. Oh, well, good luck. Not no more. Yeah. Not no more. Everyone that I meet is a reason. Mm -hmm. All of us need to look at that. And God will send people to you in need. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll be here doing this and for no reason something happens. And God will send that person to help that person. Is that right, LJ? Right out of the blue, right? And, and it's not just for that person. There's something else involved that we don't even see. And God is working that out too. That's how big a God we got. Yep. Everything in our life is a reason. Yep. Yep. Seek it. Ask God to show you. Use me, Lord. Help me step out of this and, and start doing it. Help me walk this life. Help me make a difference in this life. We're only here for just a little while. This rest of the stuff that we got promised, and that promise is real, it's for eternity. And you might not like the person next to you or the people that you meet. You need to love them, though. True. And most of the time when we feel that we don't like that person, it's not the like of that person. It's the like of that whatever they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not that person. God did not. He created all of us perfect. Mm -hmm. And he's got a reason for everything that happens to us. Everything. And for for you people who are goal minded, I I'm I I get myself, I get myself to okay. I have to do this, and I just put my blinders on and I just do it. That that gets me in my. I, I I'm not like you. I don't do it that way. So I have to pray. Help me that even though I'm focused on my goal, that I can pay attention to what you're doing around me. Yeah. Because so many times, and if you, if I'm doing, if I'm focused on something like the baptism, you come to the baptism, I have a bazillion things in my head that I'm checking off, checking off, checking off, checking off, checking off, and you come and say, and just smile at me, and I'm, I just walk right by you. I, don't be offended, please. Don't be offended. That's me. I am just goal-oriented. I can hurt myself at work and not even know I hurt myself until I got home and like, how? Oh, what the heck did I do? And I have a great big huge bruise. John will say, what did you do? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just working. I just work. So, I mean, for me, that's my, that's my like Achilles heel. I've got to, I've got to pray. 
And I know there's more people than me that, in here that, that are like that. So I got to pray, God, even though I'm focused, even though you've created that in me, that focus in me to get that job done, help me to be sensitive to the people around me so that I can minister as long as, as well as getting that job done. You know, even, even though some of us have that, where we can only focus on one thing, ask the Holy Spirit, is there a reason why? Is, is Satan God scared God. that I can't do more than, uh, that I can do more than just that one thing without doing something else? Because sometimes Satan does that to people. I've seen some really gifted people that are real good on one thing and they, nothing else. Like Terry, you know, I can only focus on this. And I've noticed over the years how Satan is, Satan got something to do here because there was a lot more this person could do for the kingdom. And then I mentioned it to him and they started praying for God to take these chains off here. Mm -hmm. And he has, and now this guy's doing all kinds of things, you know, and, I, and I'm sure that I've had them, uh, but I move. People that know me, I move. I, I, want, I want to see everybody that I meet, even my enemies. I really do. Yeah. And me too. Because he loves them just as much as he loves me. Man, Ain't that right? Mm -hmm. Everything. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to. So are we to our last? Uh, or do you have one more thing to say? Oh, I don't know. Just a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's do this one here right there. All righty. First Corinthians. Ooh, I've done all of them. The yes. worship team can start yes. to come up. We're going to. The love. Oh. The love verse. Okay, you're going to read, right? Yes. Okay. If I speak with tongues of men and angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a changing, clanging symbol. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it profits me nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. And it is not jealous. Love does not brag. And it is not arrogant. Does not act unbecoming. It does not seek its own. Is not provoked does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails, but if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there is knowledge, it will be done away. Love never fails. That's a, that's a lot. Love it? never fails. Have we ever really looked at that scripture? It's real. It's real. It's real. Yep, you can be the most gifted, most talented, most wonderful, amazing man and woman of God, but if you have not, if you have don't have love, it is nothing. Yeah. 